Konnichiwa everyone, got something fun here today. This is a box that came on the back of a turtle from one great country of Japan. Now, I had wanted one of these things for quite a while. Finally got the uh, opportunity to get one off of the good old flea bay. This is actually a little tool that I had been somewhat interested in, but never really had a need for one until I got a house with a tree in the backyard, which we can get some wood. But this is a historically important tool in Japan. Oh, I can hear the, my now two-year-old son. Can't believe he's that old already. Having a little bit of a hard day back there. Anyway, like I was saying, this is a important tool. Not really like, yeah, I guess you could say it's important culturally in Japan, but it's a very old tool. Been around a long time. Simple in its design. This is a, if I can get it open here. <laughs> Let's see what we got. There we are. This is a Nata hatchet, and this is a very, very cool little simple in design, yet cool in execution tool. This is used for splitting wood, chopping wood, clearing bark, etc. Kind of a, just use it for whatever you would need tool. This thing is mega thick. Uh, let me grab a ruler here and see. It looks about a quarter inch or so. Yeah, a little over a quarter inch thick, so it's basically a small axe. Now, I always thought these looked really cool and I thought that they had a neat aesthetic to them. They're simple in design and appearance and uh, usefulness would be off the charts on something like this. This one is a little interesting. Looks like it's gotten some use out of it. Either that or just sat on a shelf somewhere for a long time. But we're going to clean this thing up and we're, eh, we might make a new handle for it. This one's a little old and got some, <laughs> got some wasp nests actually built in there. That is, uh, telling and interesting at the same time. So if we have to make a new handle, we will. If we don't, we won't. Then uh, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Well, I'm happy to finally get one of these things. They're not super expensive like some of the nicer tools are from Japan, but they are going to be quite useful, I think. I don't know how old this one is. I don't see any. There's a little maker's marker right there that's probably not going to show up on camera, but we'll leave that as it is. But first order of business is we're going to get rid of some of this rust. Then we're going to clean this edge up and possibly make a new handle. I would really like not to. It's, it's fairly solid in there. I might just need to shim this up a little bit and just use it as is. So yeah, that's our project for today. Shouldn't take too much work to get this working again. And uh, one interesting thing about these two is they're typically ground. I don't know if you can see that. Let me move the camera in for a closer shot here. What I was trying to point out was that these actually are ground like a chisel edge. So one side is ground on your blades, on your, not your blade side, the whole thing is a blade. So one side is actually ground to a bevel and the other side is actually ground pretty flat. This one has had a little bit of a relief cut added to it and it's probably for some added sharpness, but in general, it's kind of a right-handed only tool unless you have one with a left hand grind. It'd be a little awkward to use this if you're left-handed, so I don't recommend it for you southpaws out there. However, what this does do is it makes it easier if you're clearing a piece of wood, you can hold it like this and just chip off little bits of the bark or whatever you're using. If you're cutting up, uh, I don't know, meat or something like that, it would work the same way. So essentially it's like a nice big heavy duty wood cleaver. But I always found that kind of interesting that that was a defining feature of these, but yeah, that shouldn't take too much work to get that cleaned up. It's really a pretty decent edge already. I'm going to test that, test this out real quick and see if this handle is going to hold up to a little bit of work. And... Yeah, handle feels solid actually. Yeah, actually I think we're going to roll with that handle. What I might do is I might wrap it with some tape or maybe some rope up here to give a little bit of extra grip because I don't like that gap right there. Oh, hey buddy. How are you? The little guy just walked in. Can you say hi YouTube? Say hi YouTube. No, you got nothing to say? Okay, then that's fine. All right, coming back to this. Actually, it's like a few weeks off to go and enjoy Christmas and New Year's. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to you. So I decided I'm not gonna polish this thing up. I actually really like the patina quite a bit. And if it's got a little rust on it, it kind of acts as a bit of a rust protector. So we are just gonna wire brush off this heavy stuff here. 
And it might take a bit of vinegar and do kind of a vinegar treatment. I'm sure you've seen that a million times on YouTube, but most of this is just surface stuff, so this is just gonna come off pretty easy like that. There is some rust on the tang down in there that I can't get to, but I think I'm just gonna not worry about it. Vinegar actually kind of turns the rust black and it does act as a bit of a cleaner too, so we'll just get rid of the gunk and all that stuff. So there's the mark. I don't know what it says and I don't really speak Japanese very well. Oops, see if we can focus this in a little better here. There we are. If anyone reads this, you can uh, type what it says in the comments down below. I'm not like super into makers of tools anymore in general. I think that that's fine if you are, there's nothing wrong with it. I just find that I get a little more joy out of using them than just knowing who made it and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. As you can see, the vinegar is doing its job and slowly turning everything a nice black color. I might scuff it up a little bit more with the wire brush, add a little more vinegar and then sharpen this guy up and uh, get to work with it. One of the things to remember is that as with any tool, you should treat it accordingly. And with this being a rough tool, I actually, <laughs> that vinegar didn't do anything. So it just started to rust again after a couple of days. So I'm actually just gonna leave it. I might put like some kind of clear coat on it to sort of protect it because it is a little rusty, but the handle's in good shape. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of just some plain Jane vegetable oil on that. We're gonna clean it off a bit. This is a really rough working tool, so I am not gonna make it some kind of ultra refined, ultra special tool. I think I'm just gonna leave it rough. I'm gonna leave the pits because, I mean, it really doesn't make that big a difference. We're just chopping wood. But let's get some oil on this handle and let's get this thing finalized a little bit. And uh, I might have to get, yeah, I think we'll do a sheath or something in maybe another video or in the future at some point, but let's get this thing finalized and let's go cut some wood with it. So this is actually preloaded with a little bit of just some grapeseed oil, which actually works really well as a wood conditioner. But I didn't want to sand this handle and take away all that good uh, age and all that good color. So we're gonna let that kind of soak in and, ooh, that's quite nice. I like the way that looks. Have a little bit of time later and a little bit more oil and elbow grease. This is what we are left with. And this looks awesome. I don't know any story behind this tool. I don't know where it came from, what era it's from, but this thing looks super, super cool. Sometimes all these old tools need is just a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of sharpening, and you are left with something that's very neat and very, very handy. Now something I did notice, there's a saw called a whaleback saw or a Maidiki Oga, and it has almost the same profile as this thing does. So I have a little theory about that, that maybe in Japan, the first tool to come around were axes and things similar to this, the nata, and maybe the saws came later and they saw that shape and thought, well, it'll work for that, so why not? There's no way I could prove that. In fact, I don't even have anyone I could talk to about that to discuss proving that, but it's just an idea. So I am going to take this thing outside because today is actually the first sunny day we've had in about four to five days. And I have a little bit of wood out there. I don't have a lot to chop up, but you know, this is not gonna be cutting a log in half. This is just for processing, you know, small to mid-sized things. And we'll see how it does. I got a feeling it'll work just fine, but follow me to my backyard, which feels great to say after having lived in an apartment for so long. And uh, let's see how this, uh, let's see how this neat little thing works.
but final thoughts on this. I did not have a lot of wood to process with that, so I apologize for the very short demo. However, one thing, this is actually really cool because when you cut, it kind of puts the cutting edge below where your wrist is. And it's not unlike a kukri, if you're familiar with that. This is actually a very similar concept, just a, a thick, sharp edge blade that's not quite an axe, but also not quite a knife. I guess you could use this for some knife tasks if you wanted to. However, I like it because if you're cutting, and I may, you may have seen me do this in a little uh, short demo there, if you're cutting, you can kind of get stuff about halfway through, then flip it over and smack it with the back, just like you can do with an ax. However, with this, your bites are so deep, just because of that chisel edge on that. Like I showed you before, it's just, let's see if we can, see if we can focus in here on that. And there we are. So because that edge is so deep, it takes really, really deep cuts and really, really bites into wood. So. If you're dealing with green wood, this would actually be a great thing to have in your backpack or wherever if you're camping especially. It might be something we can try with it in the future there. Actually, that'd be a lot of fun to go camping with this thing. And so in conclusion, with just a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of sharpening, and a little bit of oil, we have ourselves a really neat, useful tool that has a good patina to it and has a lot of uses as well. I could foresee this being a uh, you know, I mentioned going camping with it. I think I'm going to try to do that sometime in the future. If you guys are interested in seeing that, that is. You know, family camping trip with Japanese tools. That'd be a lot of fun. But anyway, I do think that these are worth having in your kit, especially if you have a small kit and you're working with green wood or doing anything of that nature. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed that wonderful little fun uh, restoration slash... Uh, I don't think it'd be a restoration, just be a cleanup and a tune-up job. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. I enjoy little things like this, and I know I don't make videos as much as I used to anymore. It's just a side effect of being both a father and a husband and a homeowner, so I have always got something to do besides make YouTube videos, but this is still a good little stress reliever for me. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you are interested in supporting the work, head on over to Patreon. I kind of use that as a blog of sorts just to tell you what's going on in life, and if you've got questions about Japanese tools, you can... Feel free to ask them there or ask them in the comments. I have more time to write out more thought out responses on Patreon than I do on YouTube comments because with the patrons, I feel like that's a nice little thing that you get just for supporting the channel and the work that I do. So, as always, have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara.